Look at that sunshine. Man, it feels good. Although, at minus 20, I think it's brisk enough. Brisk enough that we froze corn last night. Basically, fan on the bin, blows cool air in underneath, and it kind of, that air works its way up to the top of the bin. At minus 20, that should freeze that tin can very quickly. So the corn, it'll stay in good shape for months now because it'll, it'll almost act as an insulation to itself. So I think that is gonna do it for morning chores around here. We got cows fed, cows milked, cows fed. Big snow pile from yesterday. We've gotta to add to it. We didn't get all the snow cleared from yesterday. Classifiers here, cheese to make. A busy day, but with that sunshine, Man, it's gonna be a good day. I'm thinking job one for the morning. Feed truck's coming today. Plus, just moved her car. That's probably a good hint that job number one better be pushing snow. Snow done, or at least done for a little while until it blows in again. Dad's been busy brushing cows to make sure that we're just kind of touching them up for the classifier. We don't get too carried away, but we like having them look a little cleaner. We are gonna touch up a few tails because cows like flour, and most of them can't keep their tails perfectly clean. So, shampooing tails, rinse it, Shampoo. Fortunately, their hair is pretty coarse, so we can kind of use it with itself to scrub it up. They usually kind of like it. And because mom had them clean, what was that? A couple of days ago, a few days ago, they really don't take very long. Shampoo, rinse. On to ivory. Now for everybody else. If you've ever wondered what these tail ties do, Giselle can fashion them off for us. As you can see, she is one that if we didn't tie it up, would drop it in the gutter. And so this keeps it much cleaner. There are other ones that just tuck their tail underneath them. So therefore, when they do that, it just keeps them clean. So some have tail ties, some don't. That is why. Well, she should be here in the next couple of minutes. I believe, rumor had it at least, she was going to bring a trainee along with her. So there'd be a couple here to look at the cows. Just to give you an idea of what the classifier is doing, she's going to take a look at all of the youngest cows, so ones that have just had a calf, because with a classifier, you have to classify, if you're in this program, every single animal, whether they're good or bad, you got to take a look at them. And then we can also take a look at some of the older cows to see if they can bump some of their numbers up to see if with age they've continued to improve. The whole idea with it 
is that we'll match this confirmation score, we'll match these scores based on their looks with their scores that base on their production. And then we're gonna get genetic information back for each animal that's going to suggest which bulls we should breed the cows to with the idea that we're gonna to continue to improve these cows. Because after all, we want a cow that's going to continue to be healthy, that's gonna to continue to milk well, that's going to be built very well so that she can live many, many years in the barn um, as healthy as she can be. So that's the whole idea is that between these confirmation scores and their milk scores, we can continue to breed better and better cows. Didn't realize the hot flow until I turned that over. I gotta get my hair cut. Anyway, uh, the classifier has left, and to spare you too many cow confirmation details that may or may not be interesting to you, um, basically we had a decent day. Um, you know, nobody blew us away with great numbers, but nobody surprised us with low numbers. Um, so it's it's just one of those where I think we had a decent day with the two of them going through all the cows. If you are interested or more interested in cow numbers, maybe what I'll do is I'll throw the scores in the um, description down below the video and then you can kind of have a look and we'll spare the details for anybody who's less keen on whether they were an 82 or an 87 or what their score of the mammary system is or all those fun things. Um, instead, what we will do is we've got cheese to package. It's going to be a big job. Hey, Google, shut off the radio. There, that's better. Okay. Got our vacuum sealer set up. We got our bags. Uh, now we have to go get the cheese. The idea with this is basically yesterday the cheese maker came. Cheesemaker is a guy, young guy, his dad does it too. Um, they milk cows themselves. And what they do though as kind of their side gig is they have a trailer that they pull onto a farm and then it'll pump off milk out of your tank. Basically spend the day, make cheese with it, cheddar. Uh, and then they leave you with the cheese presses, which are the big tall things in the other room. Uh, and you package it the next day after it sat in those presses and pressed down. Oh, the, <laughs> the wild part is basically we pumped off a thousand liters of milk yesterday. It's going to probably net us about 250 pounds of cheese. 250 is probably going to do us in cheddar for quite some time. But the nice thing about this is, we've done it before, is that basically we've got to package it in the fridge uh, and we'll stash it there for at least two months. Uh, without touching it and then what we'll do after that two months is up then you've basically got a nice fresh cheddar and the longer it takes because it's all vacuum sealed it's in good shape the longer it takes basically you get a, a more aged cheddar as you go along so that's the evening job for the kids are outside playing on the big snow pile Jess is out feeding calves um, dad is gonna milk by himself so that I can get some of this cheddar done anyway and then he can take some home with him and we'll have some and basically we'll live in a mountain of cheese. Let's get to work. Oh, how <laughs> could I forget? The most important thing. If we're having cheese, we better make ourselves some wine too. Now we're ready to package cheese. First, 25 pound block.
That's 25 pounds of cheese. Now, we're gonna do these in a couple of different sizes. Basically, some of this, so this is just a white cheddar that we have. You left the cheese knife for, cheese knife for us. Uh, this is just a, a straight white cheddar. We have, I don't know, there must be at least six of these 25 pound blocks of just a straight white cheddar. And then we've got a few that they make as flavored ones. So we've got, what do we have? We have a chives one, an Italian one, a chilies one, just a couple of different, oh, a cumin one. Um, those are for flavors. So with those, we're gonna package them in smaller packages, maybe a pound at most. And with these, we're gonna package them bigger as two pounds because we do go through this much cheese. By the time we grade some and throw it in a bowl, um, you know, that'll last a couple of weeks and then you just kind of keep sealing the bag up, then you're in pretty good shape. So let's cut and seal. <laughs> Not the prettiest of cuts. Oh, good. This is going to be pretty wild. Hmm. That knife sure wants to wobble. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's not even close to square. Well... It's not perfect, but package number one. Oh, you can't even see the vacuum sealer for the cheese. Well, that's doing it. And you look at this enormous block of cheese. I think what I will tell you is that it is one of those things where the rules around this are very strict. So because it's our milk, and we signed away that basically we understand that these people made cheese in a trailer and not a food processing plant, although it's a gorgeous trailer. But anyway, um, we signed our life away. Um, we get to do it. We can't sell it. We can't give it away. We can't do anything like that. Ooh. Makes a lot of noise. I guess it's done. Uh, we can't do any of that kind of stuff. We can only use it for our own use. So because it's mom and dad and jess and i and the kids we get to keep it and have fresh cheese for the next <laughs> very long time all right let's get to it one down a lot to go Theirs is almost completely full. But seeing as it's now after nine, I think I'm gonna go do my evening barn check and we're gonna call it a day. We'll see you next time.